costumes. Do you design the costumes? I design the costumes. And then you have a cutter? Who yeah, I've worked with uh, Kim Crosley for about 23 years now. Kim is uh, a cutter at Stratford. And uh, I met her out west when she was working, I think, at Theatre Calgary initially. Kim and I have worked together for years. Uh, and, you know, we're constantly trying to negotiate how to make it a perfect costume and a marionette costume. So, and the difference between a costume for an actor and a costume for a marionette? The minute be you add a seam, you could, every seam means you lose 10% of the movement. So Kim likes to pattern beautiful things. And I've designed a lot of stuff that, you know, needs all those seams. But so on this one, this is the first show where she agreed to not line all the jackets. In all the previous shows, they're all lined jackets. And I begged her. I said, please don't line the jackets. Um, so we're still learning, you know. We're still right. learning how to uh, get the maximum movement out of, out of the puppet and still have those clothes that I design. And she cuts from a sketch that you draw? Yeah. Like a cutter in the theater? Totally. And do you have fittings? Well, she, she has the actors who don't gain weight or lose weight. So that is, that is the good thing about a marionette. So she actually comes on into the studio while the fittings are going on? Yeah, she, okay. she does most of the work in the studio. The controls and the strings. The, do, um, where do, there must be a... Well, tell me about controls. Well, when I was growing up, you know, being Canadian, we're influenced by two countries. Uh, during my childhood, it was American culture coming across the border on television and radio and music, and there was the British influence, because we were very colonial still. Um, and so all the puppet books that were in the library were American and British, 50-50. The Americans used an airplane control that is like a stick that you hold like this, and the British, of course, have an upright control that you hold like this. And for years, I tried using both leaning more towards the American, because my mentors were American. Um, but I remember years and years ago seeing uh, a man named Lumi Code, who with his wife was Code Canada Puppets in Vancouver. And they performed for years and years and years. And he was doing a marionette piece with this control that you held at a diagonal. And he got all of this crazy movement out of this puppet. And the wrist actually did this, and I thought, Sitting in the audience, I thought I was going to, you know, just burst from joy seeing a marionette wrist do that. Um, and I went backstage, and I'd known the codes for a long time, and went backstage and was looking at the control sheepishly. And I was an adult already. And a week later, a control came in the mail from Lumen saying, saw you looking, give it a try, let me know what you think. Unfortunately, as, as I was when I was a child, I took that as my entree to get Lumen Code to build all my marionette controls from that day forward, which he has done. And I sent him the control back, and I said, I think it needs these modifications. <laughs> build me one like that. <laughs> so he did. And so we're always playing around. But it's a German control. And, and I had, you know, a bit of... Um, uh, arthritis and tendonitis and uh, bursitis from, from my previous control and doing this. So this controls at a 25 degree angle and you hold it with one finger and every other finger has a job. So you can work the legs and you can work the elbows and it, 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 it's just half of the puppet is the control and suddenly I had all these free fingers to do things. So we've added things, we've added our own little paddle that the Germans didn't put on so the hands can raise independently with one hand. Um, and we're constantly refining it. But I've used this control for about 15 years now. A dancer has their body. You have your wrists, your arms, and your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Do they subject to strain and injury? And Yeah, my hands not so much mm. anymore. My hands hurt sometimes, but not from this. They, they hurt from a guy shaking my hand enthusiastically after a show a few years ago, and he kind of gave me a chronic hand injury. He was so, so I try not to shake hands too much with people. Oh my God. But you know, I have little chronic injuries from being up there. I have a rib that pops out from a show where I had to move scenery, bent over. And this show, I have a little chronic neck injury now. And you know, I'm working hunched over like this. Uh, uh, the leaning rail that I have up on the set should be higher. It right, should be, right, in, right. traditionally it would be about here, but because I breathe from here, right. I make it you know, right under my breathing apparatus. So my back takes a lot of stuff, but yeah. Do you ever use a chiropractor to say, help, oh, help me through these kind dial. of ideas? Oh yeah, 
Totally. Oh, yeah. In terms of the designing, if I design my rails in a certain way, that will help? Yeah, and I know a lot of performers who think that way, and then they get a bit lazy up there. You know, the, the fact is, I've made it as good as I can. At Bill Baird's, we were on one-foot-wide planks, eight feet in the air, three feet apart, and you hopped <sighs> between them. There was no leaning rail, and the puppets were strung so that you were actually crouched over while talking and hopping. So at least I get to stand up. And I get to hold the puppet. You know, it's true, though, that in the old days, um, I would work with the puppets at 54 inches from the floor. So I was kind of like working this way. And I was having a lot of leg pain. And I did talk to, I think it was an Alexander uh, Technique person. And they said, show me your posture. And they said, you know, if you raised your arms three inches, you wouldn't put the pressure in your legs. So suddenly the strings were 57 inches. And it opened up this part of my body, too, which was better for yeah, vocalizing. Yeah, yeah. So it, it is an interesting, constant reevaluation of literally two <laughs> or three inches will make a difference from here to here. But the books all show you to string a puppet down here. So we just blindly do what the book shows. Most of the puppet books are written by hobbyists. So it takes years to unlearn a lot of that stuff. And does the length of string change the the control you have of the, of the marionette? It's a different control, yeah. When they were, when I was on the same level as the puppets, you got a lot more robust kind of movement. They could sit on your foot and they can climb up your leg and, you know, it's very immediate and you're, you're more prone to this kind of um, right. folky kind of manipulation. Um, and a lot of people said to me, oh, don't go this length, Ronnie, you're crazy. Nobody does that anymore. Who does long string marionettes? You know, come on. And quite frankly, if I could keep going higher, I would, but my head would be in the grid at most theaters. But uh, I love this length because it's just, it's elegant. It, right. There's an, I, I can't describe it to someone, but it really is an elegance when it's working. It also means that if something gets tangled, you honestly can't reach down there and untangle it. There's a bit too right. much length in the strings. But. And how much does tangling happen? Uh, not as much as you'd think. Because a part of me sitting in the audience, you know, what happens if, if that, the control did that? Yeah. I mean, how long would it take you to... Well, you know, a couple nights ago, and uh, I, I swung some puppets off artfully during a transition, and there was beautiful music playing, and I guess I just swung a little too much, and one puppet tangled in another, and that was that puppet who had to come on. So I honestly had to just hop off the bridge, chew a string off, and climb back up, you know, in the moment. Chew a string off? Yeah. I've chewed a few strings off in my time. Like a violinist going, I, I don't need that. Yeah, it's like, get them on stage. And you hope that it's not a leg string or a shoulder string. You don't know what you're chewing off? Not in the dark, you don't, know. <laughs> so you find out when you're up there, you say, okay, what have I got? And then all I think about is, oh, I have a matinee tomorrow, I'd have to repair that by the matinee, you know. But it doesn't happen very often. It really oh doesn't. God. But, you know, there's 33 marionettes on this set, and they have about 16 strings each. So that's a lot of, a lot of string up there. What's the string they do? It's fish line. 12-pound test uh, casting line. 